the psychological impacts of fake natties on the average Joe. Before we get into this video and going into depth on fake natties, I just want to point out that this is more of a introduction video to muscle dysmorphia and how you can help your own muscle dysmorphia without getting influenced by others such as these fake natties all over social media um, depicting this great body and selling products and things like that that you can be aware of to know that you are not um, small and you can't, you shouldn't be developing muscle dysmorphia because of other people around you and external factors you should be thinking a bit more from an internal point of view Muscle dysmorphia is in the DSM-5, which is a psychological disorder manual, which is like used everywhere around the world. And it hasn't actually got its own section. So um, muscle dysmorphia is under body dysmorphic disorder. And there are a few criteria to reach to, think, to feel like if you've got um, muscle dysmorphia. These are your two preoccupied with how you look all the time you have repetitive behaviors so maybe for example you always wear your food and you always weigh yourself and you always check yourself out in a mirror with no shirt on and you don't go to family events because it will impact on your gym session and things like that or always checking yourself out to make sure that you look big um, and these are sort of the criteria that we should be looking at if you do have um, muscle dysmorphia also under the dsm-5 it is not uncommon for somebody to have muscle dysmorphia and to have an eating disorder as well and this kind of makes sense as if you want a muscular physique, you've got to mostly be in a caloric deficit. So you've got to watch what you eat. You've got to have a rigid diet program. Uh, or if you want to gain weight without putting on too much fat and um, to keep your abs or to keep looking big and muscular and vascular, then you need to have a rigid lean bulking plan. So it's not like a common, it is a common factor. It's actually under a separate category in the DSM-5 but both of them have been correlated and it's significant that if you do have a, a muscle dysmorphia or body dysmorphic tendencies you more than likely you will have um, a eating disorder but that doesn't mean that you do have an eating disorder you could have an eating disorder and not have muscle dysmorphia or you could have muscle dysmorphia and not have an eating disorder but there is some evidence out there that shows that having one, you might have the other one as well. It doesn't go hand in hand, it goes kind of hand in hand, but it doesn't have to go hand in hand. Men dissatisfied with their bodies has tripled over the past 25 years. This can be correlated with the rise of social media, with the rise of probably more big bulky action films, like the action guys in, in the films, like say, the Rock or Sloan, even Arnie, and maybe even like um, Wolverine. People like this, like all the superheroes, they're all big, they're all jacked. And this has made men feel inferior. And Hollywood has depicted something that what an average guy cannot attain. And they feel more pressure to look like these Hollywood movie stars to look like the superheroes or to look like the action figures that you used to grow up with and it's become like a social norm for like big like muscular men to be more powerful and have more money and you know probably get all the girls all that sort of thing and it's really put pressure on the average Joe and the average guys to look a certain way. In another study, it was shown that um, there is a correlation between having muscle dysmorphic disorder and steroid use. Now, one study showed that 50% uh, of people with muscle uh, dysmorphia have taken 
one or two or some sort of anabolic steroid. Now, within that 50%, 75% reported that they had muscle dysmorphic tendencies and muscle dysmorphic um, behaviours a year before they actually started taking steroids. So with 75% of people having muscle dysmorphia for a full year before they actually jumped on the juice and before, before they started taking anabolic steroids. Now, where does the fake natty come into this? So essentially, fake natty is ROI. So, and they depict a body that can never be gained without using some sort of performance enhancing drug. Um, how can you tell if someone is a fake natty or how can you tell if someone's lying about their, um, about their steroid use? So there's a couple of things that I like to um, point out. One, they are really, really big, yet really, really lean. Now, from a physiological point of view, from a normal, uh, someone that's not taking steroids, it's very hard for them to be very, very strong and to be very, very lean. Um, because it just, physiologically, it just goes against each other. If you want to be in a surplus, that's when you gain more muscle, you gain fat too. But when you're in a deficit, you actually lose strength. So, um, yeah, if you are a natty, if you are a fake natty, they can actually do both at the same time. So they can get really, really lean and really, really strong. So be aware of that. Second, um, their FFMI, which is the fat-free mass index. If their FFMI is more than 25, uh, 25, the number 25, you can look at it on, on the internet. They are probably most likely fake natties. Third, you can tell by the acne on the back or the acne on the face, whatever, and they are starting to become bald. Now, obviously being bald is also a genetic thing, like me, but if you think you're like your hair, see my, like my hair is not thin, so people who take steroids, their hair is normally balding and it's normally very thin, while mine's still like very thick. So you can tell the difference if someone's like, I'm, on steroids or, or not. Also, say within a year, and they've been training for six, seven years, if within the year they've gained like five, 10 kilos of muscle and they look absolutely huge, from a physiological point of view, from someone that's like, that doesn't take pets, your gain on the muscle is that much per year. Now, when you first start, because you're, you're new to it, you normally get like this much like muscle, and then go smaller, 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 and then it'll just like, and then until you reach a genetic capacity where you can't actually get any bigger, like you can't put significant amounts of muscles on that, people are gonna be like, wow, you just put on five, 10 kilos of muscle. So like for me, for example, in the last four years, in the last four years, I put on five kilos. So, and mostly that is lean muscle, so, in four years I've gained one point something kilos. Now, if I took steroids for a year, I would probably gain about five, six, seven kilos within a year compared to five, six kilos in the space of five, six years. So you gotta be really careful when someone automatically becomes big out of nowhere and you're like, hmm, that's a, that's a one sign that they're a fake natty. Problems with fake natties and when it comes to the psychological impacts it has on average Joes, so one, they feel like if you claim that you're natural, when you're big, bulky, lean, strong, you're gonna be giving people like anxiety, knowing that no matter how much work they do, they will never achieve that goal. And that could increase anxiety and it could increase the, the depressive symptoms too. Yeah, if, if you're thinking that, Oh, look at me, I'm, I'm natural because you're too much of a shit house to say that you're on steroids because you know it's, you know the impacts it has and people might say that you're cheap, blah, blah, blah. But it has an impact on others around you because if you claim natty and you're not, then that muscle dysmorphia in the other person is gonna set in and it's like a cycle. Um, so you've got like someone who's on steroids at the top and then you've got here someone that looks at you with admiration and then comes around to that person having muscle dysmorphic tendencies 
and then coming around to taking steroids and then they become the influencer and they become the steroid person and then it just goes round and round and round and then you just have a non-breakable cycle so we need to try and break the cycle or you need to break the cycle from here to here from here from there to there anywhere you need to break the cycle maybe so for me um, I know from here to here where the, I break the cycle because I know from the facts that, from the scientific evidence that I know if someone's on steroids or not. It used to be like around like this part here where I just wouldn't take steroids because I was too much of a shit house to take them. Um, but I'm glad I never because now it's gone like full circle. So I know that if someone's a fake natty or not by the reasons I stated before. So yeah, make sure that you know uh, your limits. Uh, goal setting is really important. Being mindful, really important. Maybe from go from like a bodybuilder style training to sports performance style training. So it's not how you look, it's how your body reacts and how your body lifts weight instead of from the bodybuilder. Because if when you know what your body can do, that's more important. So. For example, for me, when I was, I've been training for 10 years now, after about four or five years, how about four years, four or five years, I switched over to powerlifting and I'm never gonna look back into the bodybuilding. Yeah, I like bodybuilding and I probably will do it when I can't do powerlifting anymore when my knees hurt or something like that. But go down the sports performance route instead of going down the muscle aesthetics route because you will feel a lot happier within yourself and you'll never, yeah, you might chase a weight, but you're not going to be chasing abs while trying to be really strong because that's not attainable. So in conclusion, know what body dysmorphia is or muscle dysmorphia, know what it is. How to, to spot fake natties. Be aware and be mindful of your muscle dysmorphia tendencies and if you have them, and try and alleviate the problem. Um, it'll always be there, but try and alleviate the problem. Uh, go into a more sports specific sport rather than going for aesthetics. Um, and just in general, think about your health. Um, think about what the impacts the steroids are going to have on your life. Or think about the impacts of the fake natties that have on your life. If that's on your social media page, then just delete them all because if that's a trigger, delete them all. I've done that. Uh, and now I just follow powerlifters and I used to follow big like big physique models like Rob Riches and um, Greg Flitz and I used to watch all these videos and now I don't I just have, I've deleted them all off my social media a couple of years ago and now I just focus on uh, people who do powerlifting and again that might have problems as well like comparing yourself to others in your class and compare yourself to genetic freaks and all that sort of thing so it's kind of the same problem but at least it's a sport performance problem and you can always try and get better instead of being like unhappy within yourself and being unhappy within your body